There we go. All right, let's do the reads here for this week. Sorry, people. I try. I try my best here. Cigars for warriors. Hey, Billy Bitch Tits. Heard you were going to throw out your cigars. Instead of tossing them, I did, I'm not going to throw them. I thought I was going to throw them out. I was fucking mad at myself. Instead of just tossing them, here is an organization that sends cigars to folks deployed overseas. Worth looking into if you haven't tossed them yet. Just need to drop them off at a local, at a location near you or ship them. It's called cigarsforwarriors.org. That sounds like a fucking scam to me for people to get, you know, skim the great cigars and then send the troops fucking Dutch masters. But all right, cigarsforwarriors.org. If you're like me and you're thinking of taking all your cigars and throwing them down the fucking trash, you can go to, let me, let me click on this. Let me see, cigars for warriors. So what does that mean? They only give them to the people on the front lines. Oh, look at this. There's a bunch of fucking guy, a bunch of troops smoking cigars. All right, I have to do this. Who can turn the world on with his old cigars? Who can send some fucking sticks to the troops in the Middle East? Well, it's you, Bill, and you should know it. With each little stogie and cigar you show it. Send your fucking shit. To Cigars for Warriors. Sorry. Cigars for Warriors, everybody. There you go. Or you just buy a box and send it over there. All right. Capitol Hill Bill. I'm just a Bill. Hey, Bill. I'm a climate geologist for over 20 years of field work, research, and five published books. All right. I, I know you wrote that sentence. I don't know if any of that's true. I'm a geologist first and foremost, but I study the macro effects on climate of climate on earth. Do I really want to read the rest of this? The current climate crisis discourse has been dangerously hijacked by corporations who are looking to profit from it. I will try and be brief and provide clear examples. Congress is about to pass a huge spending bill that's almost $2 trillion and a significant portion of the bill's spending is meant to fight against climate change. The problem is that most of the money is going to subsidiaries of oil companies and other groups that have no identifiable role in meaningful change. Why do they do this? Why would they do that? This... I swear to God, just is it really just greed, self-preservation so they get reelected? I don't know. No mention of uh, tapering back on resources or creating standards to reduce the need for a new iPhone chargers every year. For reasons I cannot explain, there's been a push to get away from nuclear power. This makes absolutely no sense. Every time a plant gets shut down, we rely more on fossil fuels. In the last year, there's been huge moves by members of the European Union and the U.S. government to stifle nuclear power research and innovation. So like oil companies, the blue blood families from like the 1800s, they really just been running shit for the better part of a century and a half. The U.S. oil prices this year have gone completely backwards. Instead of maintaining our own oil production, that can be overseen, environmentally regulated, and of course more beneficial to the U.S. economy, we're now relying even more on oil from overseas and empowering Saudi Arabia and Russia with the fate of our resources. I'm not an economist, but I can confirm that over the last 80 years, there's been a positive correlation between the low-cost, reliable energy and quality of life for lower-income brackets. Puerto Rico is a great example of this. Their quality of life has vastly improved with reliable energy. Despite this, U.S. politicians have been lobbying to shut down domestic energy operations for no discernible reason other than the people that put them in office told them to. Imagine a career politician from New York having strong feelings about where Puerto Rico gets their energies. It's so fucking evil. Nothing adds up with any of this. I appreciate you mentioning all the flat screens that end up in the ocean. Yeah. Well, I think like, Here's my positive spin on that is you can sit there and bitch about these fucking greedy politicians and these corrupt corporations, or 
you can do something in your personal. And the only way to do it is to combat it with your own life. And, you know, as I'm sitting there bitching about, you know, liberals, the way they treat Southerners, maybe making them more closed-minded, I don't fucking know. Or, you know, maybe I could just be a nicer fucking person. You know, climate change, maybe I could use less. I could try to fucking recycle. I could try to, you know, pay attention. It's going to take actually individuals getting involved and in, in giving a shit um, and stop watching 24-hour news networks because if we all started doing that, they would then, you know, through corporate money, start putting out false stories about how doing that is eroding at the fiber of this country. Um Unbelievable. Why would you fuck with Puerto Rico? You know, beautiful people, beautiful place. I just, I just don't understand it. Never understand that. Um, why people do the horrible fucking things that they do. But then again, I'm also a cunt. So maybe, you know, if I actually had political aspirations, I'd be doing the same thing. Who knows? Who knows? This is all too fucking big for my little brain. All right, losing weight has lost me clients. Wow, dear Billy Freckleflute. <laughs> I should have made a list of all these. You guys are in the hundreds of, of quality trashings of me and my name. You know, in my orange complexion. I'm a lady listener. That makes it even funnier that a woman wrote that. Freckleflute. Uh, I'm a lady listener and need your wisdom. I've been working as a house cleaner for 10 years with many long-term regular weekly clients. I have recently lost a lot of weight because I'm, I got sick of being a fat fuck, lost 55 kilograms. Uh, but I've noticed since I'm thinner, many of my married female clients have become less friendly towards me and have been canceling a lot, especially on days their husbands are at home. Yeah, you know, Women just don't get along with each other, man. Uh, maybe because it's men are weak. I don't know. I'm sure it's our fault. Anyway, they've never ever complained about my standard of cleaning. And in fact, or maybe, you know what? Maybe it doesn't even have to do with their husbands. Maybe they just get mad because you're going to the gym and they're not or have the time to. I don't know. They've never ever complained about my standard of cleaning and in fact have told me how great I am at my job. My personality hasn't changed. I'm still the same person inside. In fact, my cleaning has probably improved as I'm so much fitter and faster now. I, sp I suspect it's simply because they see me as a threat now, which is so petty and upsetting. I can't fill these cancellation spaces with other jobs as the time slot is allocated for specific clients who are regulars. But every time they cancel it, it costs me income, which is extremely frustrating. Any advice you would have would be awesome. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Um, first of all, congratulations on losing weight. Okay, that's going to make you live a longer life. So do not put weight on to work for these fucking assholes. Uh, I would start having a cancellation fee. All right. Um, I would gradually work that in. But the first thing I would do is I would be out there and I would shop for other clients. And now that you look the way you look, the first time they meet you is how you look. All right. So fuck these weak people that aren't happy for you that you've made a great change in your life. Um, you know, and one of, the, one of the great things about making a positive change in your life is you really get to see who your friends are. Your friends are the ones that are happy for you. All right? Anybody can be a friend to somebody when they're down. You know? You remember that song... Nobody knows you when you're down and out. I don't know. There's two sides to that. There's a lot of people that will be really encouraging when you're down and out. But then when you actually get where you want to fucking be, they can start acting weird. Um, reminds me of a, 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 a cornerback in the NFL where he was a complete fucking asshole when he won. And then when he lost to us, he ran up and he's shaking Brady's hands. And be, oh, what a class act. It's like, well, what the fuck? Anybody can do that when you lose. It's how you act when you fucking win. Uh, all right. Boyfriend's cat screams all the time. So what I would do, getting back to that, I would. you need to expand your business and get new clients looking the way that you look. And you know what? You can expand your business and then one day just 
not have to clean those fucking jealous cunts houses, homes anymore. But good for you. Congratulations. All right. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm very happy for you. All right. Boyfriend's cat screams all night long. All night. All night. Um, Screams all night long. Hey, Bill, I'm a 30-year-old lady listener who's been dating my boyfriend now for almost three years. Uh, You're 30 years old. You've been dating for three years. What the fuck's going on with that? You know, you don't got all day. Shit or get off the pot. Uh, when we first got together, he would stay over at my place, eventually leading to moving in. About a year into our relationship, he moved his cat in as well. Oh, God. You're dating a man that has a cat. All right. He has had this cat for approximately 10 years, and I can understand his attachment to the fe- his feline friend. Yeah, that thing's going to live to be at least 17 years old. Cats fucking hang around forever. Uh, That said, ever since he moved her in, she has proceeded to meow all night long. And this is not your regular cat meow. This is more like a screaming yow, like someone is killing her. He's tried numerous things to try to calm her, and nothing seems to work. I personally work in mental health where my focus and engagement is critical in working with people. However, I have not had a restful night's sleep for the better part of two years. And it seems to be getting worse, impacting my abilities at work. What would you do in this situation? Signed, sleepless in New Mexico. I fucking break up with the guy. This guy's choosing his fucking cat over you? Fuck this guy. I'd break up with him. I'd say, listen, either that fucking cat goes or you go. You know? Why doesn't he pay to get some fucking cat whisperer to come in there and figure out what that stupid fucking thing's problem is? All right. I, I, I would give him the option to do that or I would break up with them. That's what I would do. OK. And I would also look at yourself that what the fuck is wrong with you? I don't mean to be an asshole that you would put up with this shit for two fucking years. Like, like you need to put a value on yourself. And your night's sleep, you know, better part of two months. I can understand two fucking years of this shit. I mean, I'm not even in your situation. I can't even tell you how much I hate that fucking cat. This fucking guy is choosing that cat over you. Yeah, fuck him. You know. You can go the passive-aggressive route, you know. Start fucking with the cat's food, but I don't want to get into all the PETA people with that one. Uh, Wife came out as asexual after 15 years of marriage. Dear Billy Blue Balls, I've been a fan of yours since Chappelle's show days, but new to the podcast. Last Christmas, my wife came out as asexual. Parentheses, fuck you, 2020. She said sex has always been a chore. She's not doing it anymore, and I can handle it myself from now on. What? Wow. Wow. We talked about options, and she doesn't mind oral a couple times a month, but that didn't last. The last time we had any kind of intercourse was back in July on our 15th wedding anniversary. She said, I know you're expecting something, so let's get this over with, and proceeded to just lay there. Wow. In September, I was rubbing her back. And she just turned off her table lamp and leaned more into it. I pressed my luck and kissed her on the shoulder. She jumped out of bed and slept on the couch for the next three nights. I gave it another couple days and said, we need to talk. She said she felt sexually assaulted. Okay, well, if I was you, I'd go to the luggage store. I'd pick out myself a nice set. I would fucking fill those things and I would just leave. She then accused me of being very selfish because I hadn't checked in on how she's been feeling since her revelation. This is true, but what is there to check in on? She seems to have found herself while I have basically lost an appendage. Um, Yeah, uh, she's expecting you to do all of the fucking work to respect where she is And she's not even considering the fact that you just found out that she's been living a lie for 15 fucking years of your life. 
And of course, you have to cons- take her consider- into consideration. Listen, I don't think there's anything wrong with trying to put yourself in her shoes, but if she's not going to do it the other way after she lied to you for 15 years, then uh, you know what are we doing here? Anyways, he said, I mentioned opening up our marriage and she just shut that down because she claims I would be spending all my free time looking for other women, ignoring our family. She offered me articles about marriage between sexual and asexual partners. And basically the sexual spouse has to live as asexual too, which I find to be very one-sided as you should, as she would, if it was the other way around, she says, I can leave at any time, and I asked her if she had really thought that through and what it would do to the kids. Yeah, this seems like a fucking loophole to get out of the marriage. We have three kids, 11, 9, and 5. Her reply was very matter-of-fact. We've been married for 10-plus years, so I am entitled to half your retirement, and I'm the primary caregiver, so get out of the house. I'm not going to lie, I could have strangled her in that moment, but I went to for a walk to cool off. Yeah, I mean, she's really coming at you with just no feelings at all. I never thought I would be in this position considering a separation and the guilt of what it will do to the kids is killing me. I'm trying not to become resentful, but her my way or the highway mentality really makes that difficult. Obviously, I'm not going to force her to do something she doesn't want to do, but I'm only 42 years old. You spent a small fortune on therapy. Let's, I think, hear your thoughts on this. I mean, she's a first ballot Hall of Fame cunt. To just be honest with you, I mean, she has no, the way you're writing this, she has no consideration for your feelings whatsoever and is upset with you that you can't read her mind. She doesn't care that she's been lying to you for 15 years. She doesn't give a fuck um, about her behavior, what it's going to do to her kids. She's all about herself. And it's not going to get any better. And it seems like she's going to be What does primary caregiver mean? Does that mean she makes more money than you? Let me see. I got to get this through. What does primary caregiver mean? Uh, It's a person assisting an underage child or a sick, elderly, or disabled relative. Any adult can become a primary caregiver for a relative in need, regardless of education. Okay, so she's the one taking care of the kids. So I'm entitled to half your retirement. And the, this is what happened. Okay, she lied to herself for a long time about who she was. Okay? And she went along with what society said. She had to get married and have kids. And she never wanted to do it. All right? And she made that choice, and now she's blaming you. And she's taking no fucking personal responsibility for the fact that she lied to you and started a family with you, and now you have all of this connection. And in the process of lying to you, is now going to take half of your retirement and feels that she deserves that because she lied to you. Now, here's the thing. Unfortunately, she has a vagina, which means she's going to go to court and she's going to fucking win. So what you have to do is get the fuck out of this. All right? And all you have to do is work on, you know, maintaining a positive relationship with your kids. Never badmouth this cunt. Okay? Never bad mouth her to her kid, to your kids, all right? They, when they get older, they're going to figure out who she is, okay? And, you know, I don't know. Is she entitled to half your retirement? I don't know about that. I have no idea. 
But I know your kids are 11, 9, and 5. So you're going to have to pay child support for the next 13 years. And you're just going to have to man up and just realize that that's what you're going to have to do. Okay? And she can take your half your retirement and she can take the house and she can do all of that shit. But she can't take your happiness unless you let her. And you can go out there as a 42-year-old, all right? And go out there and you can find a woman that actually is, is, deserves you because this woman doesn't. And I'm sorry that this happened to you. And, you know, I don't know. The only empathy I can have for this woman is maybe, you know, society looks down on asexual people. So she felt she had to do this thing. I don't know. But the fact that she's fucking angry at you is ridiculous. She owes you an apology. Um, unless, you know, you're some overbearing son of a bitch. And I mean, I can't tell that in your email. I have no fucking idea. But if you're just being a husband and you're thinking she's loving you and enjoying having sex with you, um, I don't know. I'm not even convinced that she's fucking asexual. Okay. Maybe she is, but you know, when you fucking get out of this thing, if you decide to, because you know, listen, I'm not an expert on this shit. I'm just fucking get, this is just barroom fucking advice. All right. Brace yourself that there's another guy. There's a possibility of that, but what you are in the way you have described it is unfucking winnable. You know, like when you just, a team just realized, like, we're not going to win a championship this year and they just dump all their stars. This is what you got to do. You just got to pack it in. You ain't winning the title this year. But, um, you know, 42 is, is plenty of time to turn this whole fucking thing around. And um, if you just really work on that, and, and like I said, stay positive with the kids and never badmouth your ex. You know, you can turn this whole thing around and then it just becomes a funny story. And I got to be honest with you. The, here's, a, here's a positive thing. Who the fuck is going to top this story in a bar? When guys start telling them, oh, I dated this chick. She fucking did this and that. Oh, yeah. I was married for 15 years. And my wife out of nowhere told me she was asexual. fucking you know i went to kiss her shoulder and she accused me of sexual assault and then said she was entitled to half my retirement and she's gonna take the fucking house (laughs) i'm sure you could tell it in a funnier way um yeah i mean i would just i don't know i feel for you man that's fucking terrible that's fucking terrible man it's you know it's just so much shit people go through. Well, that woman, she loses weight. She looks good. And she feels good about herself. And then people stop fucking using her because they can't fucking handle that she's in shape. I swear to God, man. I swear to God. Right? Every time I start to turn the corner and I start to think positive about life and people, you know, you guys write in. You send me these fucking stories. I just don't get it. I don't know. Maybe because I sat there and I watched fucking 27 innings of people going, whoa. <laughs> I'm just like. I don't know. Maybe it put me in a fucking mood. I have no idea. But anyways, happy Halloween. I hope you guys had a great Halloween. I hope you have a great November. All right? The holiday season has started. Really try to pay attention to it. It always goes by nice and quick. Thanksgiving's coming up next. And, uh, you know, don't invite any cunts over. You know? (laughs) Just try to enjoy a nice day of just sitting down and fucking eating or whatever. Uh, oh, by the way, I didn't even bring up the New England Patriots, man. They beat the fucking Chargers again. We just fucking, I don't know. You'd think Tom, maybe I did bring that up. I can't remember. I'm so fucking tired. Um, I got to be honest with you. Watching that game, okay, and watching our QB there, and watching Bill Belichick adjusting to him and watching him kind of, you know, getting on the same page and seeing how our defense is playing. The little bit that I saw, as you can tell. I don't know, the Mac Jones era is good. I think I, I have very, I'm liking it. The only thing I don't like is how old Bill Belichick is, but I, I just, you know, 
we are a very solid football team, and I feel we are way better in November than we, you know, than we were in, in the end of October, I should say, than we were in September. And uh, I know what that means with Bill Belichick teams, and I am excited for the future. All right. Anyway, that is the podcast. And uh, yeah, and that's it. You guys put value on yourself and in your time and don't let people treat you like shit like that and stay in fucking relationships. Don't do that shit. Don't fucking do that. Just move on. Same thing like friendships. I'm telling you, you get to a certain point in life. You know, some people get there way quicker than I did. And it's just, you just really like, if somebody is work, if they have fucking work, just it's it. It's over. You already have a job. You're hanging out with friends. It should be easy. You know, <laughs> if it's fucking work, if you got to think like, well, I want to say this, but if I say that, then I'm going to have to deal with this. Yeah. Get out of that. Get out of that bullshit. All right. Okay. That's it. Happy Halloween to you guys and uh, enjoy your week. And I will check in on you on Thursday.